all you folks out in Transformer land. Thanks for coming by for this live stream review. Uh, thanks to everyone who came by uh, TFCon this past weekend and uh, said hi. Really appreciate that. And with that, let's just go ahead, go ahead and get started with this uh, preview for Medicus. So obviously, uh, the lighting is kind of bunk. I don't know what's going on here. Again, kind of a... Uh, Let's see which other one. Uh, I think this is probably the best. Um, so the, the Ocular Max and M Mastermind Creations had a few items that were out on display. Not a whole lot. Um, that's That was kind of the story of this TFCon. Uh, there wasn't much going on in terms of reveals and um, um, showcasing of samples, at least, at the con. They did show some good stuff at the, um, at the third-party panel. But one of the things that was on display was from Ocular Max, the first of their uh, protective bots. So this is Medicus, also known as G1 First Aid in the Masterpiece scale. We'll just do a quick 360 of him. And uh, he's very close to complete. He feels really great in hand. Uh, if, I had gotten, if I got this right now, uh, I'd be happy as a retail release. Uh, hey, how's it going, Pac? Mike Rogers. Uh, Mecha Reviews, Sick Case, Joe. We, wow, we have a lot of people on. So I'll say hi to a lot of folks. Antoine. Um, but this is uh, really exciting because, one, if you guys didn't know, they, this is their second um, all-in-one com combiner. This is um, also the one, uh, the second one that, has, that features their all-built-in um, concept, which means all the combined parts are within... Um, this figure itself. There's no parts forming. There's no real add-ons uh, needed to form any of the three modes, which is really uh, impressive engineering uh, and one of the uh, my favorite things about this. So the designers, um, AK, Macotron, and uh, I think uh, Jesslyn, I think they all have a hand in this in some way, shape, or form, uh, whether it comes to the engineering transformation, design, or sculpt, or something like that. Um, they all have kind of a hand in this. So I've always liked this line. It's one of my favorite lines uh, from the Bruticus. Now that they're doing Defensor, I'm very happy about that. So uh, with that, uh, with this preview, what we'll do really quickly is we'll go over the robot mode, we'll do some comparisons, uh, transform him into alt mode, and finally into combined mode. And we're going to end the review there. Um, I will give a, uh, obviously, disclaimer that this is a pre-production sample. And while I think it's very, very close to done, um, it is not a final copy. So keep that in mind if you have questions about coloring or quality and stuff like that. We all have to take... Uh, the, what I have here with a, a, a grain of salt, since again, it's not a final copy. Um, also, instructions wise, I wouldn't use this as an instruction guide because I, I, I don't have the instructions. They don't have them yet. And uh, I basically just guessed my way through a lot of it. Like the other um, figures in this in this series, uh, it's pretty intuitive once you get uh, some of the parts down. And I found it very, very enjoyable. So, before we get into anything else, let's do some quick comparisons because I know people love comparisons, especially during my live streams. They always want to request um, uh, comparison with this figure, that figure, making me go all into my cabinet. So here he is with MP44. Uh, here he is with the next figure we'll do in the lineup, which is um, Steeljaw, the first of their Autobot tapes. Um, I did transform one of their previous figures, another Limbot. So this is the arm. They're both arms. Uh, so trans transformed him. So you can see how they scale. Uh, and if you saw my other reviews, any other reviews of this group, all the limbs are different sizes, uh, which I liked a lot. So just because this figure is a little bit shorter than um, this guy here doesn't mean he'll be shorter or taller than any other figure in the in the lineup. We'll really have to see when they release uh, the rest of his teammates to see how they all scale and how they look dynamically. Uh, <laughs> Oki, I don't sure. I don't even know how to. Say your name. Okay. Uh, yeah, definitely not going to do that with HasLab Unicron. Mine's still in the box anyway. Oh, hey, Kato. Hey, Yuni Tabby. Hey, Alan. How's it going? Uh, comparison with MP Ratchet. Uh, actually, my... What's it called? Is blocking it. Oh, and I also don't have an MP Ratchet on display. Official one. I could do with Ironhide maybe a little bit later. But 
Uh, let's st stop there. I think this is more than enough. Any other requests that you have, I'll do at my leisure. Or you guys can just deal with it because, come on. If, if you have it with MP Prime, I don't know why you'd need it with really any other figures. All right. I guess the only other figure I do have readily available is an oldie but goodie, and that is <laughs> MP Bumblebee Mold, the original one. I don't even remember what his, his number is, like MP21 maybe? So you can see how he scales. All right, with that out of the way, let's talk about articulation and so forth, um, as well as just the paint. So the paint you can see is obviously very nicely done. He has a light, lot of nice tampos here for the emergency. The windows are outlined and not just blue. Uh, he has the headlights painted and so forth. Uh, the wheels do have some kind of gunmetal paint around here. And even on this sample, it's actually pretty well done. This chest section here is all painted as well. His eyes are a metallic blue slash purple, which I really like. So let's go into articulation. He does have a ball jointed neck that goes into the head and then he has a next uh, hinge so you can look up and not really down but you can go a little bit down with the ball joint shoulders he can come out like this he has a rotational joint here another hinge in here so separate from that one he has a bicep swivel Oops, sorry he has a bicep swivel he has double jointed elbows he has rotation at the wrist, wrist. and then uh, I think he has pretty standard MP uh, ocular max hands. So he has the ball jointed thumb, and then each of the individual, oh no, sorry, this pinky is individual articulated, and I think the two middle fingers look like they're one molded piece. Could be wrong there, but it looks like to be the case. And then the uh, pointer finger is uh, curled as well, individually articulated. No uh, straightening of the fingers or anything like that. As you saw before, the weapon or the gun, the pistol, pegs in kind of like they did with um, uh, the space shuttle one. I don't, I forget what his um, ocular max name is, and it grips it like so. And it does fold up, so I imagine there is some storage for it, but I, I honestly couldn't figure out where it stores. I'm sure 100 percent they they have a place for this to store because every single one of their uh, weapons stores somewhere in their alt mode. Uh, I just couldn't figure it out yet. So we'll put that off to the side. Coming to the waist, he does have 360 waist swivel. And he has a ratcheted ab crunch. And he can go pretty far, like so. All right, he has hip skirts that go to the front and to the side. And a big one that goes into the back, which gives you forward about 90 degrees, backwards about this far, about 45, 50 degrees, out to the side, 90 degrees. He has a thigh swivel and a single jointed knee, which gets you 90 degrees. Coming down, his foot and uh, ankle are kind of on one piece here. You can see it's one piece there. He has a hinge that allows you to move this forward and back, but another one just for this hingy piece here, and then the toe itself. And as I showed you before, this whole thing tilts like so. All right, so I think that's it for articulation. Hopefully I didn't miss anything important. But yeah, he has a good range, he has a good uh, amount of articulation, uh, especially again, considering that he is a triple combiner, a uh, triple changer since he has that uh, combined mode as well. So very happy with that. I think he looks really great. Uh, he does have a little bit of showing back here and you can see some of the mechanisms, but overall I think he looks um, really, really nice. All right, so now we'll go into, first we'll go into, well, let me let me see if I have any questions real quick that I can answer. Oh, 89 people, thanks, and 27 thumbs up. I appreciate that, everyone. All right, Antoine, six, no, he doesn't have six. He has one, two, three, four, and then one big one on the back. So five. I did see Antoine and Cato, as well as uh, TM, my good buddy, at TFCon. Uh, Volatist, that was his, that was his uh, third, part, third party name.
All right, so... All right, so I don't think I saw many questions. Uh, usually, usually TM Reviews is really good about um, cherry-picking them uh, once uh, I start paying attention. Any word on DZF from MMC? Uh, totally off topic. No, I, I don't have any update. All right, so let's go ahead and get in transformation. Transformation, again, is pretty enjoyable. We're going to go to uh, alt mode first. And again, uh, I may, get, may be getting some of these right or wrong, but by and large, it looks like I'm like 90% plus there. So the first thing we'll do before I forget is that uh, these chest wheels, which are rubber wheels um, and do spin, as well as the back ones, same thing. These actually... Uh, pull down to go to alt mode and you can see that uh, they go up for a more accurate animation mode all right so from here we'll lift the head up pull out this neck panel rock the head down and then you have to extend on this double hinge to get it up and over so now you have a little bit of a gap here so you do that <clears throat> we'll deal with the hands so each hand we're going to open this piece up uh, I think you have to rotate these 180 degrees. I had to to just get it cleared to go in. And then here is an interesting one I've never seen before. You actually have to pull pull on the forearm panel here. And what this does is allow you to collapse the bicep in there. There's a tab that goes in like so. We're going to need to rotate this out like this for transformation. So we'll just do the same on this side. Uh, order shouldn't matter for this. So we can go do that. Get this up like so. Open up the forearm panel, rotate the hands 180 degrees, close this up, close that up. Next up, we'll deal with the backpack. So the backpack is in like two parts, the front of the, of the uh, van or ambulance. Pull this out and up and away. You can rotate this. And for now, we're just gonna keep this here. Uh, we need to get the arms in before we can transform the rest of this. And then, here, let's, Oh, sorry. Actually, let me do this first. Get the arms up. Open up these side panels where the doors are for the vehicle mode. Open these up. Like so. And now we're going to deal with this back, the back or top panel here. This all collapses in. You just want to pull out like so. These flaps will rotate forward and open up like wings. You want to get them uh, past uh, horizontal because you'll need these to tab in here. So from here, we can bring the arms that we had folded up the correct way. Uh, I'd like to crunch the abs just so you can see a little bit better. You have a tab here that will go in. So get that in like so. Get this in like so. And with that, you can close these down. And then the lights can go down as well. Before we close the doors, we want to rotate this 180 degrees, bring this down. You'll see these two tabs here and a corresponding piece up there. <clears throat> and then you use this double hinge to rock this door, window, panel, side, whatever you want to call it, down. And tab that in. Lastly, you have to make use of these like kind of triple hinges. And you have to rock this back. This will sit down and forward like so. And that's the front of the cab. All right, coming to the lower leg, we deal with these each separately, but obviously they're identical. First thing I like to do is go flip this up. Uh, let's see, we're going into vehicle, right? Okay, I'm just trying to remember which, which direction I'm going. Uh, we're gonna pull up on this piece as well as up on this piece and open these up. You wanna rotate the heel in like so, and then the toe down like that. So it's kind of a uh, parallel to the top of the vehicle. We need to untab. You'll see this red tab here that goes into leg. You kind of have to pull this out like that and rotate this 180 degrees, clearing this tab here, which will lock everything into place. Coming to the fist, you can see the fist and the fingers hide in here. We want to pull this out. The hinge will open up like so. There's a base hinge and then the finger hinge. So you want to get these fingers down like that. All right. 
from here, let's go ahead and close this up and these all tab in. You need to do that so that you can raise this up and the fingers will slide in just underneath here and right on top of that foot or heel panel that we had shown earlier. Now we can go ahead and fold this up, press it down, it tabs in here and here. And ah, before we do that, we need to swing this down. And this is whole leg assembly is on a slider that you saw in the back of robot mode. We want to slide this all the way up and we want to collapse this in on itself like so. You can see how that's all working. Once we do that, we can close up this panel again. It was double layered. You want to, uh, you was, it was single layered. You want to fold it up. So it's single layered you want to collapse that in. The only thing that, um, you may want to do before that is actually the thighs have to um, slide in. So you can see how they slide in a little bit like there to close the gap between the two legs. So in robot mode, it's like this flush with the outside. You want to slide that in a bit. And then the last thing before we close it up is there's a little tab here, which will help lock everything into place with the front front half of the vehicle mode. So that's one leg, we're gonna just hurriedly go through the same thing on the other side. So we'll flip this up, close this up, extend this section and open, same thing with this section and open. We're gonna to wanna to fold this whole foot assembly kind of in, fold up the toe. We're gonna to wanna to untab this red section. That will allow us to rotate this 180 degrees. At any point, you can go ahead and un un get, unlock uh, the hands. Again, we were gonna wanna extend at the base joint here, and you'll see why there's two joints here. And then extend at the fingers, and then at the base fingers, you wanna curl them up. So once again, we'll close this down. That tabs in here. These fingers will come up go into that little cavity. This will come up and down, locking those into place. And now all we need to do is collapse the legs again. Once again, we want to slide the red legs all the way up and in on itself. And before we do that, slide the thighs closed or um, towards the inside and flip out this little tab here. Close this panel up, and then with this, we basically just sandwich the two halves, of the two halves or two legs together, which create the two back halves of the cab or the van. And then we just collapse the at the ab crunch. You'll have tabs here, 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 and here. And then we just gotta get them tabbed together, like so. And that's it. Hey, you watch, how's it going? That's how we get him into alt mode. Uh, questions, Makoto, Makoto says the weapon stores behind the door and behind the doors in bot mode? Behind the doors in bot mode? You mean the rear doors? Or behind here? I'm not really sure what, what, uh, what that meant, but I guess we'll take a look at that maybe a little bit later. But yeah, I, I, again, I couldn't find it, but if Makoto is in here, Makotron is in here, I'm sure they know. Uh, front, front doors, okay, hold on. Let's just listen to one of the Oculac, Oculamax MMC folks since they'll know. So let's lift this up, untab this section here, and... Maybe, well, this tab goes here. Maybe it's the other door. Mm, trying to see where this, oh, I see, I see. Oh, that's clever. All right, well, this, the tolerances on this aren't great on the gun itself. I noticed the gun handle is a little bit loose, but it does seem to work. Let me see if I can actually 
Oh, yeah. Oh, see, this is why we're lucky. So I've always said that the MMC Ocula Max crew are the ones that are most in tune with the community. Um, and this is one of the fine examples. Both, uh, both AK and Makoto have joined live streams in the past. Um, just to, just to, I never asked them. Um, they just sometimes just pop up or, they, I mean, sometimes I have, but usually they just pop up and, uh, just join in with the crew to share with their knowledge, especially with some of these early samples. Their insight is obviously very, very useful. Makoto can probably tell me if I uh, missed anything, but I think I got most of it. That was, that was just clever. I never would have thought it would fit there. I thought it would be a tab somewhere. So that's why I was racking my brain. But anyway, here we are in alt mode. As you can see, a very, very clean alt mode. Nice rubber tires. I think I did answer that before. Uh, TM asked some other questions. Going to TFCon Toronto? I'm not going to TFCon Toronto. Hey, Windcharger, how's it going? Uh, overall, very clean. This tab... This tab sometimes does not, at least on this one, the other copy, they sent two copies. I felt that that one held together a little bit better. Uh, the only reason I took this one was because um, one of the wind, uh, side view mirrors broke on the other one, uh, on the other sample. So it is soft rubber. Uh, these things get passed and thrown across the world. So I guess, I guess it got broken somewhere along the way. Uh, I don't have a lot of vehicle modes. As usual, so here's a couple. Uh, no, no die casts in uh, this figure, as far as I know. I mean, aside from you know some of the metal here, but no, the most of it's plastic, and I think that makes sense, especially with a combiner. Uh, I don't think Bruticus has much die cast, if any, either. If I'm thinking about it, and here is a, a sample. This isn't. Um, MP Ironhide, this is uh, Voodoo Toys. I, I have a random sample that Toy Dojo left with me, and I just, I don't know, I just, I like the um, alt mode. So I don't, I don't have a lot of samples like this, but you can see how they scale there. And of course, my obligatory streak confirmation, uh, comparison. And you can see how well they scale here. But yeah, overall, I think this one looks really great. Again, I don't, I'm not really sure about the scale. Uh, this one, again, is probably inaccurate. I don't remember how it, well it scales in comparison to the official MP, but I'm not going to go out of my way to transform a random uh, figure just for this preview. Maybe I will at uh, some point for the full release. But there we go. All right, any other questions that we have in alt mode? Yeah, that, Antoine, that's Voodoo Toys uh, Ironhide or Ratchet. I don't remember which one it is. It's been in alt mode for years. Yeah, sick case, I think I answered the qu your questions earlier. Also, nice uh, Vader um, icon, avatar, whatever you want to call it. Clinical, are the wing mirrors sturdy? Uh, I think I mentioned it before. It's uh, softer plastic. Uh, it's definitely thin, so with anything thin, whether it's, you know, hard or soft, metal or not, um, I, I would just be careful with it. Uh, Paul, hey, Paul, how's it going? I feel like I haven't seen you in a while, Paul. It says, day one pre-order. Hey, Juan Pablo Alcazar Uzeda. I don't think I've seen you before. But yeah, the transformation is very, very fun and enjoyable. Uh, not hard and not frustrating where you have like a lot of um, clearance issues and stuff like that and like and very logical like I said I figured this out without any instructions and without any guidance the only guidance I got was uh, from Makoto just now on how to store the weapon all right so let's get this into what I believe is um, combined mode the arm and if I get this wrong again we have Makoto here to guide us on what some what some of the uh, um, idiosyncrasies I might be missing. So we'll just go ahead and split the front and back. 
Uh, the front part, I think, is very easy. If I, Unless I'm mistaken, there's only two things. Uh, the first is just to open this up if you want. I never understood that, but we'll get to it later because I don't want it to hang out. And the second is the combiner port, which is a cool part, and I want to show you that. So we just need to kind of reverse some of the transformation that we had before. Just get the legs kind of spread out. There's a, The main thing is to get the fingers out here. So uh, go ahead and pull this open, pull that open. We're gonna untab here. We're gonna rotate 180 degrees like so. Get the fingers and thumb uncur unfurled. Bring it back. That should tab in here. All right, and then if I'm not mistaken, we'll just close this back up. Go like so. And the only difference is you slide this down a tiny bit and flip this up. Um, I might be missing something here, but I wasn't sure. But this is the only uh, securing tab that I could figure out. I feel like there might be another one, but this is my best guess here. All right, like so. So same thing on the other side. We're gonna open this up, flip this open, bring this leg here. I'm gonna get this down so that, that when this flips up, it will tab into place. Yeah. Come on. All right, there we go. Fingers, we need to open this up just so we can get this fist out. We can close that back up. Once we have this open, rotate 180 degrees. Bring that back around like so. Close this up. And then we have the two halves. Let me check real quick if Makoto is telling me anything that I might be missing. Hey, G-Tony, how's it going? Hey, Cryotech. All right, I th I th no comment yet, so I feel like we're in good good shape. And then tab the two halves together. Um, again, if, if I'm missing something, let me know. Oh, actually, let me see something here. So the one thing I, I wasn't sure about is there's kind of like a gap here in the back. I wasn't sure if I'm missing anything. But I'm doing a double check, and I don't see anything that might cover that up. So let's see here, tab the two halves together. And again, with this this particular version of the, thanks Makoto, uh, this particular version of the sample, these thighs don't seem to uh, slide as much as they, sh they should. So the other one uh, did a really good job, but you can see there's a slight gap in this one here. Like so. Uh, and I said there's not only the fingers, that we had there that can hinge all the way around. But there's also a new added hinge here. Which, so now you can do this and do peace signs and probably do all kinds of uh, key blasts and everything like that. But now you can fold that down to have a regular straight hand or you can fold it up as we were displaying it at TFCon like so. As before, they have a really ingenious double half of the hands that come together so that you can, but you can still rotate them, rotate the wrist, which is super clever. Uh, the only thing you have to do now is go ahead and rotate at the waist and then rotate at the forearm to get it in the correct orientation so that you have an elbow joint here. Okay, so I was talking about the front here. We're gonna open this up. And lastly, the really cool thing that I, I didn't, I, when I figured this out, I was really happy with myself, is that once you open this combiner port, I was like, is this the port? It looks like this is the tab. And I couldn't uh, figure out how to get this out. And then um, I was just messing around with it, and I found out it has a really cool mechanism where, remember that ab crunch we talked about? So if you go all the way in, you can feel it click a little bit harder, and then when you pull it out, it actually pulls out the combiner joint for you. So it doesn't do it on like any of the lower clicks, but if you go all the way, it will pull this out for you. So I thought that was really clever and cool. So you fold that in and you can bring that joint back up 
and that's ratcheted as well, which will give you extra um, stability in the shoulder joint. So uh, hopefully I didn't miss anything. <laughs> yeah, Makoto says, kudos for the factory for engineering that. Yeah, I thought that was super cool and a, a fun find. So a lot of people will ask if I like read a lot of the instructions when I get a figure. And in general, I try to see if it's intuitive first and try to figure things out. Because I think some of the joy of transformation, especially with figures like Ocular Max um, and these all built ins, um, half of the fun of owning that figure is trying to figure out the engineering and getting these small surprises, like and even figuring out that the pistol hides there. I'm sure somebody would figure it out uh, without a designer letting us know. And that's just really cool. It's just really, um, I guess, a part of exploration that I think we kind of take for granted nowadays. We kind of want to have the best instructions and very clear, kind of be spoon-fed. But I think there's a lot to say about really just enjoying the process and discovery. So uh, let's see here. It looks like there's some questions. Oh, and Griffith. Yeah, Griffith76. Yeah. Also a team member. Paul says, awesome. I love not having to dig out the ratchet combiner uh, joints. Yeah, I agree. So I still function as, hey, I still function. It's been a while. Um, will these function with the Bruticus joint? So that was displayed at TFCon. And I'll, I'll probably show that off to you now. So the short answer is the arms do share the same combiner port slash joint. However, the legs are different, so you won't be able to, like, scramble sit sitting them like this. Hey, Steve. Hey, Memo. Uh, I'm not starting over. Alex B says, please make Devastator. Uh, I don't know if you guys saw the other cool thing that they pu pushed out at TFCon um, this past weekend, but they also have it on the official MMC YouTube page. They did do a little teaser and uh, clearly, there's a new combiner on the on the uh, around the corner. Uh, they didn't really say exactly who it is, but there's a lot of speculation already. All right, so uh, let's see here. Let's go over the the joints. So we already talked about kind of the joints we have in the the shoulder with the ratchets here. Uh, we have. Upper bicep swivel here, and I guess you can talk, uh, consider this another shoulder joint as well, which is separate from the actual uh, shoulder joint. You do have double jointed elbows, so you have that one here, and then you use kind of the um, the hips of robot mode to get a little bit more. It's about a little bit more than 90 degrees, not a ton, but it's great that we do have that. All right, uh, that's one thing I do think uh, happens a lot. And when you try to bend the arm, these little tabs do tend to come out a lot. And again, that might be just due to, again, final tolerancing and everything like that. Uh, we did show that he does have another joint here. So it doesn't go all the way around because, again, it's engineered as two halves, two legs. But um, you do get swivel here in about... Uh, maybe 30 to 45 degrees, something like that. The wrist, same deal. You can rotate it about, I would say like, oh, actually, mm, yeah, more than 90 actually. So this is probably more than 90. Yeah, more than 90, sorry about that. We talked about the hand, so he does have that palm joint, I guess. And then each finger, has a pin joint at the base, another one up here, and another joint at the tip. So one, two, three separate sections in each finger. And another addition is that now they can splay. So now you can spread them out like so, which is awesome. The thumb joint is on a hinge at the base, as well as a ball joint or ball peg, as well as uh, three sections for the thumb. So a lot of art articulation in the hand. Uh, let me actually bring out, let me bring out uh, 
Bruticus and yeah. Uh, this they had this showed off, but let's bring up Bruticus here, and which one should? Uh, he's the other hand. Sorry, I know this is off screen, but one of the things I wanted to show you is just a direct comparison of the hands. Here, let me get that straightened out. So comparing the hands, you can see that they are quite similar in some ways, but different in others, right? So you get that displaying motion, and again, you have this extra hinge joint up here, which you don't have with this Bruticus. Sorry if it's out of focus. I can't control that. This is a YouTube app. In terms of overall size, you can see they're very they're very similar, except where the uh, shoulder joint actually connects. This one's a little bit higher. All right. <clears throat> There's probably something that Makoto can answer as well. I know a lot of people are asking how tall this guy is in comparison to the Bruticus, and is it um, is it about the same? head to head with their Bruticus without the boots, these add-on feet or with the add-on feet. I don't know if I don't know if uh, Makoto can answer that. All right, so really quickly, let's scooch up the camera so you can see how it ports in. All right, let's see here. So the one thing I think I did notice is that uh, this one would actually have to tab in upside down due to the locking mechanism. You can see the, or maybe you can't, the locking me mechanism has a little tab here uh, that should go in right there and not here. So not like this, but also the shape dictates it as well, but upside down, and then you can tab it in and then you can rotate the joint downward like so. There you can see the G2 Bruticus with, oh, sorry, to make it more accurate. There we go. Okay, that's what I thought. So Makoto uh, did confirm it's the same height as Bruticus, this one here, with the add-on boots. So slightly taller if you don't have your, uh, the add-on kit. Uh, Defensor will be uh, slightly taller, uh, about, I'd say maybe a half an inch, maybe. So yeah, he looks very, very good. Uh, Anthony Brown says, do you get to keep these? No, I do not. I do not get to keep these, unfortunately. Uh, mnemonic Syntax, this is not a custom, this is a new recolor of the G2, which will be coming out on... Uh, uh, let me check when they said. Give me a second. So one of the mistakes I made while helping out um, Ocular Max MMC was I was supposed to print out these name tags that also had these handy dandy um, tentative release dates, and I forgot to do that. So the Assaultus team, which is PS thirteen through seventeen R uh, Assaultus Regenesis, will start um, releasing in quarter one of 2022. So I don't know which figure will come out first, but um, some people were asking if it's going to be a box set. It doesn't look like it's going to be a box set. All right. And Medicus, who we have here, uh, that is also slated to uh, release in quarter one of 2022. So not too far away, but with the holidays coming by, and if you guys don't know, there's a lot of uh, issues in China with uh, manufacturing and so forth. Uh, let's see here. Makoto says 0.5 centimeters. I don't know what 0.5 centimeters is in reference to.
maybe the height difference, but I don't, I don't, 0.5 centimeters is super small, maybe 0.5 inches. If they're talk, if uh, they're talking about the boot height. But yeah, we will also be doing uh, a series of live streams on this one. Uh, I'll be doing just basically a quick comparison. I'm not going to do transformation or everything like that. Uh, and doing a live stream with that would be really difficult. But what I'll be doing is a live stream comparing this deco in combined mode and robot modes and in um, alt modes for three different live streams because I'm not going to sit there and transform all these you know, live, so you guys can see that. Oh, Antoine, I had a good question. I actually thought about this myself. So we showed that the hands are different in terms of articulation. Uh, Antoine is asking if it would be possible to get an upgraded set of hands that would replace the Bruticus hands. Um, Size-wise, it looks like it, it should work. These hands are actually slightly smaller than those, uh, but I think it might be, I would have to look, but it might be challenging to actually remove the um, hands. I would have to see, well, who do I have? Where, where did, where did Vortex go? Let me see real quickly. How oh, the hands, the hands look like they're only connected with a screw. So I, I theoretically, I guess it could be possible if they're using the same connection here. Let me see. But I, I doubt they'll do that just for hands. And since they've already come out with the upgrade set, uh, I don't know that they want to release another upgrade set just for a set of hands. Um, I think a lot of people would actually probably be a little pissed about that if they, if they did that. So let me scooch this back down here. But let's see. Uh, oh. Uh, I don't know how the connection works here. I guess it would probably is a screw though, but it looks like it's screwed in this way. So any, anything could be possible, but realistically, I can't imagine that they'll release just a new set of upgrade hands for Bruticus. Uh, TM uh, questions, will there be an add-on kit similar to Bruticus for the feet and chest? Uh, what do you mean for the feet and chest? Since the feet will be, uh, since he'll al already be taller, Defensor will al already be taller, I don't think he'll need boots. Uh, especially since I don't think there's a difference between the toy and the animation um, of the feet. Unlike with Bruticus. And then the chest, I'm not really sure. Are there different chests for the, the um, Defensor animation and um, toy? Maybe. Oh, Eric's here. Hey, Eric. How's it going, man? Hey, z Farsh. Good to see you. Some new faces. I'm glad to see we have some new faces. I guess we have a lot of folks on. 118 folks, so I appreciate you all joining. Uh, a little red thing on his belly, if I recall correctly. Uh, I don't know. Uh, oh, they said still evaluating, though, so we'll see. I don't know if that's in reference to the add-on kit or the height. <laughs> Juan Pablo says, transforming without checking instructions, exploration, that's open uh, open and play policy. Yeah, that's uh, that company hasn't done anything, anything since. Yeah, Antoine, so next, uh, next is um, Steel Jaw. So Steel Jaw will be next. I did a, a vote on uh, my YouTube community page asking which of the three we would like to see in which order. And actually, initially, um, the G2 Bruticus was in the lead, and then Medicus took the lead. And now it's pretty close between G2 and Steel Jaw, but I think um, it probably makes more sense to do Steel Jaw. It's in the lead right now, and um, he's a little bit easier to review. And if I'm doing a series of three um, for G2 Bruticus for the comparisons, it probably makes sense just to knock Steel Jaw, um, knock his out real quick. That'll be in two days. Tomorrow night, I'll be on 
uh, TM Reviews, um, TF News Live, the thing we do monthly, although we're just doing a special edition since we're um, just coming out of TFCon and there's going to be a lot to talk about with regards to the um, reveals, some of these reveals, but also some of the uh, third-party panel reveals. We, we didn't get uh, as much as we usually do, but we definitely got a lot from like Fans Toys and New Age and a couple of companies that um, I honestly was very happy about and wasn't expecting a whole lot from. Uh, Makoto says Jessalyn killed with those auto cassettes. Yeah, they look great. And uh, yeah, so I think that's it. I'm not going to do any more transformations and going back into robot mode or anything like that. I uh, just wanted to show you at least a quick preview. Uh, in my full review, I'll go ahead once I have full instructions and get confirmation and uh, maybe any other engineering tweaks they do last minute. If they do any, uh, I'll make sure that I have the full correct instructions for this guy. But overall, I'm super happy with this as a, um, as a quality figure. It feels very solid, uh, both in robot and alt mode and arm mode. Uh, I think they've improved, uh, they've learned a lot from their first combiner with their Bruticus and Combaticons, and that really shows here. Uh, they seem to have taken um, uh, improved steps in a lot of the areas that were not maybe weak, but um, could have could have used some improvement, like the hands, like the combiner joint, uh, some of the articulation, um, and overall tolerances. I think this is going to be much better. I'm looking forward to how they do the legs because the legs were probably the biggest complaint for a lot of fans in combined mode just because the overall weight and the hips couldn't support it. Uh, I think the, the fact that they're using the um, hotspot and hiding all of the leg kind of like um, frame in there will hopefully actually add to the stability and ability to actually um, support the legs as opposed to how they did it um, with... Uh, their Combaticons and Bruticus. Joe Spragan says, I do wish these had elbow, elbow head ratchets. Uh, yeah, I guess they could have done that with the, um, with the knees as well. So he, would have, he would have had to have ratchet and knees. But I think it would maybe be a little bit difficult just because of the mechanism here as well as the sliding mechanism. I don't know. It might have been a little bit challenging to do that. All right, so uh, that's going to be it for today, everyone. Again, thanks for joining all 126 of you. If you guys enjoyed this preview, um, I always appreciate the thumbs up, uh, share, and subscribe if you're not already subscribed. And again, since I do reviews so sporadically nowadays, uh, if you want to keep up to date with what I'm doing, uh, the easiest way is to go ahead and subscribe and click that notification bell. And it'll give you a heads up once I schedule something or go live with something, uh, since that's basically all I do now is live streams. Uh, with that, thanks again to everyone who joined. Thanks again to Makoto especially uh, as part of the team coming in and um, answering some questions uh, that we, we had, both the fans as well as myself, and um, adding a little bit of spice to this live stream as opposed to me just trying to guess a lot. Oh, oh Matt McCardle is here. Oh, man. Okay, so it's definitely time to end if Matt's on. Uh, but yeah, we'll be doing a live tomorrow at TM Reviews. Uh, for their TF News Live, they're, they're our monthly kind of thing with me, TM Reviews, and T-Man, 978. There he is right there. And then on Thursday, I'll be back with Steeljaw. And then it's undetermined when I'll be doing my next series after that um, for the G2 Bruticus. Uh, the main reason is I'll be out of town this weekend doing a Spartan race. Uh, so that's going to kind of get in the way. And my plans are still kind of up in the air if I'm going to make that kind of a family trip weekend. So uh, wish me luck on that. I haven't done one of those before. And I'm not in the best of shape. <laughs> so uh, I might be too tired or sore. Um, to get that, uh, to do another live stream. But that will happen sometime in the next week. And there's actually a few other things that I'm going to be reviewing. Uh, one is this kind of um, modular base kit that they had. I think Matt bought, Matt McArdle might have bought one, uh, as well as some folks from the Figure Action Podcast. Um, uh, who else bought that? Uh, Dave bought one and maybe some others. But in any case, I want to show that off as well. That's a pretty cool kit. And I want to show off how that works. That'll probably be after all that. 
But if you guys are catching this on the rewind, go ahead and ask any questions in the comments, and I'll try to answer those at a later date. But with that, we're going to sign off for today. Thanks a lot, and have a good one.